Season 2 starts and Master Finian pays an unexpected visit to Satomi and the boys, showing he wants something. He tells Satomi he ordered some dolls, but they haven't arrived. Satomi asks Genpachi, Shino, and Sosu to get the dolls for him. As they head to Yumumura, where the doll makers live, they pass through a cherry forest and ask a man for directions. He points them to the house. Inside, they meet Inumura's daughter, Hinagu, who takes them to see her brother, Dakaku. Dakaku is cold towards them and explains their father disappeared before finishing the dolls. He tries but fails to make them himself. Hinagu says they can stay. Shino is happy for the beef dinner. Dakaku wonders why he keeps failing and thinks about his father's absence. He asks Hinagu if their problems are because of their father's visitor who wanted Dakaku back for money. Daikaku's real father once came, wanting him back, but Inumura gave him dolls instead. That night, Daikaku has a strange dream. The next day, Shuna finds Daikaku struggling to make dolls. Shuna plays with a cat doll and then goes for a walk in the forest. He's hit by a ball thrown by a boy in a kimono who runs away. Shuna finds a shed full of dolls on the compound's outskirts. Shuna discovers a doll that jogs his memory, realizing it resembles the woman who attacked him and his friends in their village. As he tries to process this, Inagu enters. Shino asks her about the doll. Hinag recalls her father spending much time perfecting it, mesmerizing everyone who saw it. Shino then heads back to Daikaku's work shining up, showing him the ball that hit him. Daikaku remembers giving it to a cat he once had. He shares that the cat came and stayed with him, but one day disappeared, making him realize he was murdered. He asks Shino to sit for him while he works on the dolls. Later, the boy with the ball is seen singing in the cherry forest when a branch falls. Daikaku recalls his lost memory of being killed. Suddenly, the boy transforms into a cat, surprising Shino, Jempachi, and Sosuke. Jempachi transforms into his demon form, but another black cat, Kei, appears, scolding him. They're interrupted by Nachi Hyuka, guardian deity of the Hyuka family, who reveals himself and his spirit cat. He belongs to one of the four sacred beast houses. They ask Nachi why he's there, but he keeps his reason secret. Shino senses something odd and realizes the cherry trees are a barrier. Inside, Daikaku recovers his memories. Shino follows the cat into the forest, knowing it created the barrier. He asks why, but gets no answer. Shino wonders why the cat cares about Daikaku so much and discovers Daikaku named him, though Daikaku doesn't remember. Warm branches fall, signaling a problem. Shino cuts down the trees, removing the barrier. The cat warns that someone dangerous can now enter. Meanwhile, Daikaku remembers his father's death and his real father's greed for the dolls. His real father stabbed him for refusing to give them. As Daikaku lies dying, he wishes the cat would protect his sister and the dolls from his real father. He loses consciousness, but the cat drops a gem labeled Gratitude before he wakes up healed. His real father lies dead. In the present, a dark aura surrounds a skeleton approaching the compound. Daikaku realizes its aura. Jempachi offers to chase away the ghosts, but Daikaku decides to confront himself, knowing why it's there. The cat Noro appears, and Daikaku appreciates his timing. Daikaku talks with the ghost Inumura, who wasn't ready to die when he did. Daikaku is about to trade places with Inumura when Noro sacrifices himself to consume the ghost, dying in the process. Daikaku names him Noro for the first time. The next day, Shino convinces Daikaku to keep working on the dolls. Satomi worries about Shino's delay, while Konami teases him about their relationship. Nai reveals he's been stuck there for six months because Cade, who didn't want to return to the capital, acted strangely due to Yacht and the Foxes. Yacht's arrival indicates Satomi's presence. Shino intercepts Satomi and takes him to the shed, where he sees the doll. Satomi realizes Shino's memories are resurfacing and makes him forget by swiping his hand over his face. When Shino wakes, he forgets everything. Satomi carries him back to the compound, inspiring Daikaku to create a doll based on Princess Fuse, a symbol of disaster. The next day, Daikaku finishes the doll and gives it to Satomi in a parcel to keep it hidden from others, especially Finn. As the group prepares to leave, Daikaku mentions his plans to move to the capital soon. Shino sees a faint image of Noro on Daikaku's shoulder, realizing Noro will always protect him. When Finn receives the doll from Daikaku, it reveals a recreated moment of Satomi carrying Shino on his back. Next, Satomi assigns Shino and Sosuke different tasks. Shino is to teach children at the church to read and write, reluctantly accepting after realizing Sosuke will be dealing with rats. At the church, the rebellious kids led by Atsushi, a more Shino. However, a blind girl named Kaho touches Shino, asking for a storybook. Later, Shino tells Sosuke about Kaho's interest in fairy tales, unaware she's blind. Sosuke explains, please, she's warming up to Shino. Shino promises to get a complete book for her. Shino plans to spend the night at the church, so Shino heads home alone. 
On his way, Shino stops at Dotto's stall to taste a new recipe. He offers feedback, hoping to help improve it. The next day, Shino reads the novel to Kaho under a tree. Afterward, Kaho asks how to remember someone without seeing them. Shino struggles with the question, pondering it all night and discussing it with Sosuke, who reveals Kaho was abandoned as a child and has no memory of her parents. The next day, Shino and Kaho are under the tree when Dotto's owner arrives with the meal Shino suggested. Impressed by its sweetness, Shino agrees to write more recipes for him. He also gets to name the dish as a gesture of gratitude. After the old man leaves, Kao asks Shino to write her name so she can feel it. Shino explains its meaning, exciting her. When the other kids arrive, they want their names written too. Shino obliges, but troublemaker Atsushi ruins it, leading Shino to slap him for being rude. Atsushi cries loudly and Sosu comes out to investigate, but Shino doesn't explain, taking Kaho away. On his way home, Shino passes Dado's stall but only sees his daughter and wife. Later, Sosu, Asako, and Kango discuss Shino's bond with Dado, learning he passed away a month ago, making his store popular due to his recipes. Asako finds Sosu roasting potatoes for Kaho, who touches the fire without feeling pain. Sosu reveals he stopped feeling pain five years ago and injuries heal quickly. Days later, Kaho tells Sosu the nuns are looking for him, noticing his cold hand. Sosu then arranges a feast for the kids at the church for Kaho and Sushi's birthdays. While everyone eats outside, Shino teaches Kaho words inside. Atsushi brings cake and asks Shino about his name's meaning. Shino tells Atsushi that his name means considerate person, teasing him about not living up to it. Atsushi apologizes for his behavior. After the feast, Sosuke and Shino leave, bidding farewell to all the kids. Kaho, the last to leave, encounters Sosuke's shadow, Owl, who introduces himself, limiting his warm hands unlike Sosuke's. Meanwhile, Nachi returns to the capital and visits Sat's chambers, revealing he's encountered someone eliminating spirits in a village, wielding a sword with golden eyes. Shino bursts in, already aware of the culprit and eager for more details. They discuss the spirit-hunting incident in Moshi Village, where the regional deity was slain, leading Shino to decide to visit the village, suspecting Al's presence. At the same time, Jempachi investigates the village's killings on behalf of the military, meaning John at the shrine. She explains the deity's presence and its two lives, one seal at the shrine. Shino, Sosuk, and Kabango arrive, welcomed by Jenpachi at the train station. Shino instructs Jenpachi not to mention Al or the gem to Sozuk. Jenpachi briefs them on the unusual deaths blamed on the regional deity, Princess Jana, who resides in the shrine. Her guardians, Takanobu and Saki, hand to her, but she won't be seen until next week. Jenpachi reveals that Yana's dog died that morning, too. The group decides to infiltrate the shrine to gather more information. Soshu transforms into his dog form and enters. Jana welcomes him warmly, not wanting to be alone after her dog's death. She shows Sozuke the seal on her leg, explaining she's at the shrine because of it. The next morning, Shino searches for Al in the village, knowing he's somewhere within. Meanwhile, villagers cause a commotion at the shrine, demanding action against the killings. Jana, saddened, confides in Sosuke about feeling humanized. She cries and the seal on her leg flies off, targeting the villagers and leaving one behind. Elsewhere, Shino finds Ao in the forest, still discussing with him when Asako arrives, seeking revenge. They fight, with Shino attempting to intervene, but Ao knocks him out. Ao then attacks Asako, revealing his vendetta against Asako's parents. He promises to reclaim what was taken from him and leaves with Shino. Asako reaches the village to inform the group but finds Sosuke at the shrine with Jana. Sosuke learns that whenever the seal leaves Jana, she freezes and doesn't know what happens until it returns, carrying the scent of blood. Just as Jana is informed of Sosuke's true owner coming to take him, Sosuke rushes to the gate and finds Kango waiting. He's shocked to learn that Shino has been taken and even more surprised that Shino hid Ao's existence from him. Meanwhile, Shino wakes up in a shed in the forest, where Ao reveals his plan to take control of the deity by eliminating its vessel and obtaining both seals. He shows Shino the seal on his arm. On his way to Shino, Sosuke receives Asako's katana, now believing Sosuke is its rightful owner. Ao explains his plan, wanting the deity's full power. When Sosuke arrives, a fight breaks out. Shino tries to stop them, fearing the consequences of killing Ao. However, a cut of Sosuke's arm enraging Shino and triggering his Murasami's aura. This causes the seal on Ao's arm to react, forcing itself out and transforming Janna into a dragon above the shed, halting the fight. Back at the shrine, Janna overhears Takanobu and Saki discussing the seal's role in the village killings, shocked by the revelation. She encounters Gachi in the forest, who explains that they are originally one being split by humans, 
one seal in a deer, roaming the forest, and the other seal in a human, locked in the shrine. Despite their efforts to leave, they're forced to stay, unable to rest due to Janna's distress. Janna feels her other half sorrow, wanting to die for the harm caused. Shimil absorbs Janna into his arm, and they return to the inn, finding Sosu's injury worse than expected. Meanwhile, a reveals his plan to gather enough spirit to match Mora's power. That night, Jempachi asks Shinob to accompany him to the shrine the next day for a task. Takenobu and Saki worry they can't present Janna for her oracle event due to her moodiness. Janna reflects on how people only visit for the deity within her. The next day, villagers gather for the oracle event. Shino arrives and learns something is wrong with Princess Janna. Accompanied by Shino, they find her covered in scales, indicating her imminent death. Shino asks her wish, but she hesitates. Despite encouragement from Takenobu and Saki, Janna struggles to give up her duties. Shino tells Jempachi they can't act without Janna's wish. Sosuk understands her struggle to wish for normalcy, having guarded Janna since birth. Janna heads to the gate, where villagers demand action against the killings instead of wishes. As Princess Janna is about to lose control, Jempachi transforms into his demon self and carries her away, asking for her true wish. Finally, she expresses her desire to simply be Janna. Jempachi brings her to Shino, who hears her wish clearly. Shimo agrees to grant it, releasing the Janna from his body as Princess Janna's Janna also fades away. The two Yananas reunite and the scales on Princess Janna disappear. The newly united Janna explains they're exhausted and need a new vessel for now. They suggest Shino, but he declines having Morami already. Shino calls out to A, suggesting Ao as a vessel. A accepts and warns Shino and repay the favor someday. Shino vows to protect Sosuk, who learns Ao stole his gem from Shino, prompting his pursuit. With everything settled, Shino asks Kango to hire Takanobu, Saki, and Yana at the inn for a fresh start. Kango agrees, having already sent a letter to his mother. Next, Shino discusses Satomi scolding over the gem with Hamaji, Sosu, Konami, and the foxes when Nachi enters, seeking his spirit cat, Kitty. Shino agrees to help Nachi find Kitty, who's spotted in the old town, avoiding Princess Koko. Kitty encounters a shadow eater who consumes his shadow, leading to a confrontation with Jempachi. Later, Shino visits Kanaya and learns Jempachi left Katie with Kobo's mom. She's happy to have the cat and grateful for Takanobu Saki and Janna's employment. Shino serves a meal, but Katie complains until given a proper portion. Katie reveals his frustration with sharing space in the manor with other spirits like Chikaji, the foxes, and Yacht. He desires his own territory but struggles to decide. Mew interrupts their conversation by biting Katie's tail, enraging him. Katty tries to transform but realizes he can't, suspecting a shadow ear consumed his shadow. Shino reassures him, saying his shadow will return on a full moon. Shino informs Katy about the gems he's searching for, but Katy can't sense them in his pony form. They decide to search together, with Shino pondering his own strength harboring Murasami. Meanwhile, Satomi worries about Ao growing stronger with each spirit he defeats, especially now possessing S's gem. Later, Shino and the boys gather at the inn to drink and relax. Daku arrives, revealing he's moving to the capital with his sister for her schooling. Katie informs Shino that Daku has a gem, unaware of its significance. It turns out all the boys in the room possess gems, except for S's currently with Ao. With two gems left to find, six are now accounted for. That night, Shino and Katie step outside under the moonlight, making their shadows visible. Shino's plan to use himself as bait for the shadow eaters proves successful, and they quickly return Katie's shadow to him, allowing him to return to his proper form. Shino reassures Kay that he'll continue hunting for the remaining two gems. It's revealed that Nai wasn't originally Katie's master. Katie belonged to Nai's older brother Yuri, who didn't believe in spirits. After Yuri's death, Katie chose Nashi as his new master. Katie returns to the manor and opens up about his past with Yuri to Nashi, who understands his feelings. Dosetsu arrives at the imperial capital to search for his sister Matsuki. Shino and Suk engaged in a snowball fight, welcome Dosetsu warmly. Dosetsu reveals his purpose in the capital, and the boys offer to help search for his sister, starting with the Red District, where children without relatives often end up. Meanwhile, Sook works at the church with Kaho and elsewhere. Hamaji plans to go shopping with Janna, who's excited to explore the town. Asako and Kango begin their search in the Red District, asking about red-haired girls aged 15 to 16. A mysterious hooded man offers to help them. His search leads to a trail of bodies as he seeks out his target. Meanwhile, Shino is accompanied by Hamaji and Janna as they walk through the streets. Feeling tired of carrying books, Shino drops them off at the dorm before rejoining his companions. At the church, Sosuke is busy working when Ian appears and whisks Ka away, mistaking her for the girl he seeks. 
However, Ain soon realizes his error upon conversing with Ka, who shows no fear due to her blindness. Meanwhile, Sosuke is frantically searching for Ka when he runs into Shino. After a brief exchange, they locate Ka with the help of Murasami, much to Shino's relief. Elsewhere, Hamaji and Jana continue their shopping excursion. Hamaji is reminded of a hairpin she once gave to her brother. The military becomes aware of the murders targeting individuals with red hair, prompting Genpachi to realize the pattern. Kabango, feeling responsible for the chaos, decides to track down Aim using his demon form, though he'll have to wait until nightfall to avoid drawing attention. Disu, walking through the streets, becomes a target of Ain's attack due to his red hair. Ain quickly retreats upon realizing his mistake, feeling fearful when he spots Hamaji, who fits the description of his target. She possesses red hair and is of the right age. Ain's attempt to grab Hamaji is thwarted by Dosetsu and the Snow Princess, who frees Ain's arm and force him to retreat. Dosetsu recognizes Hamaji as his sister, and although she initially denies remembering anything before Atsuka Village, she later admits to Shino that she does remember Dosetsu as her brother. Dosetsu expresses his happiness at finding Hamaji and seeing her content, but Shino insists that Dosetsu Shinold talk to his sister. Realizing his true intentions, Dosetsu runs after Hamaji, giving her back the hairpin she once gave him and expressing his desire to open a shop in the capital to be closer to her. That night, Kabango transforms into his demon form and tracks down Ain, consuming him as punishment for his crimes. The boys gather at the inn to have fun and learn that Dosetsu also possesses a gem, bringing the total count accounted for gems to seven. Satomi informs Shino about a boy from Aura Village who vanished a year ago, but has returned unchanged. Shino and Sosu head to the village, where Shino enrolls in the elementary school and sits close to Shinobu. Shino notices Akihiko in his class, sitting quietly with white hair, lost in his thoughts. Meanwhile, at Akihiko's house, tensions rise as his father struggles to cope with his son's silence and refusal to eat. Akihiko reflects on the regret of not expressing his true feelings to his mother before she left for the clinic. The following day, Shino asks Shinobu why he doesn't want to leave Akihiko alone, to which Shinobu explains Akihiko's tendency to act strangely when left alone. While Shinobu leaves for the diary room, Shino stays behind to look after Akihiko. During their time together, plants suddenly sprout out of the ground attempting to cover Akihiko, but he refuses to go with them, causing them to disappear. Back at the Kakia Inn, owned by Tei, Chudai, the monk they encounter on the train arrives and begins to pace talismans around the house. Shinobu explains to Shino that Chudai is actually a good person who once saved his life, despite Shino's frustration with him. Later that day, Akiko's mother decides to leave the clinic to visit her son at home, feeling that it's long overdue. Meanwhile, Shino and Sosu head to the mountains, inquiring about their location from Shinobu. Shino, with a mysterious purpose in mind, keeps his intentions regarding the mountains to himself. Akiko's mother arrives home to find her son sitting alone in the cold backyard. Overjoyed to see her, Akiko finally utters some words and hugs her tightly. His father joins them, holding them both in his arms. Akiko asks about his mother's illness, and she reassures him that she is no longer sick, so there's no need for him to get the flowers again. Meanwhile, Shino, Sosu, and Shinobu head to the mountains to check on the bell flowers. Shino believes Akiko went there to get the flowers for his sick mother. To their surprise, they find the flowers blooming and they hear the flowers say they have fulfilled their promise. However, at that moment, Akiko's body turns to dust while he is holding his mother among the flowers. They find his body among the blossoms and it's revealed that his last wish was to send his mother flowers. After returning home, Shinobu falls asleep and remains unconscious for over a week. When he finally wakes up, his first words reveal his hunger. Though it's not unusual for him to sleep for extended periods, it's the longest he's ever slept. Chudai informs him that Akiko has been buried. Shinobu goes to take a bath in the spring and finds Shino there as well. During their conversation, Shinobu reveals that he's actually 22 years old, Shinaking Shino, who thought he was still a child. Shinobu explains that he got lost in the mountains when he was 6 years old and Chudai found him 10 years later. Despite not remembering what happened during his disappearance, Shinobu has continued living his life. As Shino realizes that Shinobu also bears the same birthmark as them, A is seen in the forest taking down a barrier erected to block a tang. Shino informs Sosuke about the birthmark on Shinobu's arm but hasn't discussed the gem with him deeply yet. Later that night, Chudai reveals to Shino a rumor about a tang in the mountains that takes away pitiful children, particularly those in pain. Shinobu was taken because he had no idea who his father was and his mother was found dead in the forest 16 years ago. That night, Shinobu suddenly stands up from his bed and walks outside after a strange dream. 
Chudai, Shino, and Sosuke find him surrounded by birds with a spirit unicorn named Natsuma also present. The tag appears and whisks Shinobu away, claiming him as his child as he raised Shinobu after humans abandoned him. Shudai, Sosuke, and Shino begin tracking the Tang. Meanwhile, Shinobu wakes up on the mountain and recalls a memory of a Tang named Kagu, declaring him his son and explaining that his brother Hazuki should help protect him. Shinobu learns that Kagu is dead and Hazuki informs him of the sacrifices made to keep him alive. As Shino and Sosuke approach the mountain, they encounter a barrier. Murasame is about to break it when Al arrives, revealing he's on a different mission. He warns them that the princess will soon awaken and vows to prevent them from gathering the eight gems. Back at the inn, Shugai survives a fall off a cliff, but Shino and Sosuk have to take him back home. Tei advises Chudei to give up on pursuing Shinobu, as she believes the Tang will eventually come for him. Tei reveals that her daughter's wild nature led her to have a child with a Tang, which dawns on the group that Shinobu has Tang's blood. Meanwhile, Hazuki tells Shinobu that Kagetsu is not entirely dead. Hazuki then meets Ao in the forest, suggesting they have a deal. Ao is after the gem within Shinobu, and Hazuki implies Shinobu can have it. Shortly after, Sosu takes Shinobu to Kagetsu's body near the water, where Shinobu contemplates returning Kagetsu's life force. As Shinobu is about to act, Hazuki intervenes, injuring Ao, who attacks. Shinobu jumps in to protect Hazuki and gets injured. The injury causes the gem to fall out, and all seven gems begin to glow. Ao accuses Kagetsu of hiding the gem inside Shinobu. After a risky escape, Hazuki sacrifices half his life force to save Shinobu. Shinobu wakes up and reminisces about his time with Kagetsu, blaming himself for Kagetsu's death. However, Hazuki admonishes him and asserts his parental duty. As they try to flee the mountain, they encounter Ao, leading to a fight. Despite being injured, Hazuki creates a fire barrier, allowing them to escape. Meanwhile, Shino and Sosu head towards the mountain, witnessing the animals fleeing into the fire. Hazuki instructs Natsume to take Shinobu away from the mountain for safety. He gives Shinobu the gem, but Shinobu resists, leading to a struggle. Eventually, Shinobu falls from the sky, while grappling with Natsume. As Shinobu falls, his wings activate, allowing him to land safely. Meanwhile, Hazuki releases his grip on the world, causing Kagetsu's body to turn to dust. Ao appears and mocks Hazuki for his weakness, but Hazuki insists it's a parent's duty to sacrifice for their child. Shinobu, now considering the mountain his home, returns to protect it. With Shino and Sosu's help, they quench the fire using their powers. Natsume arrives, relieved to see Shinobu safe. They search for Hazuki, but find only traces of blood, leading Shinobu to assume Hazuki's death. However, Shino consoles him, reminding him of his successful efforts to save the mountain. Elsewhere, Ao delivers Hazuki's body to the princess, who heals him and wipes his memories. Despite his failure to obtain the gem, the princess assures Ao that their plan remains on track as long as Satomi can't gather all eight gems. Shinobu decides to accompany Shino and Sosuke to the imperial capital to hunt down Ao, revealing he possesses the final gem. With all eight gems gathered, Shino realizes their mission is complete. As they depart from the mountain, Sosuke notices his left eye's vision impairment but keeps it to himself. Upon reaching the capital, Shino senses something amiss with Sosuke but can't pinpoint the issue. They head to the Kona Inn where they reunite with Shinobu. The boys gather the gem, triggering memories of the tale of the eight dogs and their hopes for the awakened princess. During a meeting, Daikaku reveals his third eye, using it to control Mew and eliminate Shadow Ears. Kokono explains it as the evil eye capable of identifying and destroying non-humans, often associated with cats. Shino and Daikaku suspect Noro's involvement. After the meeting, Sosu confides in Shino about his visit to the manor. Asako approaches Shino, revealing Sosuke's strange symptoms. Shino realizes Ao likely stole Sosuke's eye as promised, blaming himself for not noticing earlier. He rushes to the manor. At the manor, Sosuke informs Satomi about the eighth gem and their encounter with Ao. They discuss Ao's mention of a princess awakening, speculating it might be Princess Tamusa. Satomi recounts Tamusa's tragic tale to Sosuke. Tamusa's tragic story deeply affects Sosuke, who expresses sadness for her. Satomi is concerned about Sosuke's eye condition and worries about Ao's growing strength. He fears Shino's reaction when he learns the truth, but is reassured by Sosuke's promise to handle it. Sosuke runs into Shino outside the office, and Shino is upset that Sosuke didn't tell him about his eye. Despite Shino's desire to confront Ao, Sosuke insists on handling it himself. The next day, Shino visits Ayan at her request to keep her company while she recovers from a cold. Ayan assures him she's feeling better thanks to Hamaji's medicine, and they discuss their recent experiences. Meanwhile, 
Konami seeks Sozuk's help to deal with Finnegan's presence in the manor and Sozuk agrees to assist. He manages to persuade Finnegan to leave promptly. On the other hand, Chiki tells Shino that his visit should be brief, implying that he should not linger too long. As they leave Aen's room, Shino encourages Chiki to give Aen more freedom despite concerns for her safety, so she can live her life fully. Shino then heads to Sack's room to apologize. As Shino climbs the stairs, Finn descends. They pass each other and Finn remarks about Shino's resemblance to his mother. This triggers a memory for Shino, causing him to faint. Kaname and Soshu carry him to his room. In his dreamlike state, Shino sees his younger self with someone who seems like his brother, seeing a poem. When he wakes, Satomi is there. Shino starts singing the poem, and Satomi helps him finish it. Shino wonders how Satomi knows, but decides not to dwell on it. He begins asking about Finn and his mother. Satomi suggests it's best not to remember for now and focuses Shino on their mission, the gems. Shino gets upset, putting Sosu's well-being first. Satomi explains that the gems choose their owners and won't let them die until their purpose is fulfilled. Shino realizes the stolen gem may have chosen him. Meanwhile, Sosu collapses and his birthmark transfers to Ao. Ao vows to obtain everything before resting. Sosu is taken to the medical wing. Shino blames himself for the theft of Sosuke's gem. Satomi warns that Sosuke's soul is slipping away. Shino flees the manor to search for clues about Ao and the gem. Kokono notices an increase in spirits in the capital. Shino questions people in the street for information, and a woman claims to know Ao's whereabouts. Shino follows her into an alley, knowing she's a spirit but curious about her intentions. Moments after Asako blocks the demon woman's attack, Kate arrives and swiftly deals with the swarm of demonic rats she summoned. With the immediate threat neutralized, Shino focuses his attention on the demon woman, summoning his sword and swiftly dispatching her. Following this encounter, Shino urges Cade to assist him in locating the duty gem, knowing that wherever the gem is, Ao will likely be there too. Reluctantly, Cade agrees to join the mission. Shino returns to the inn to await Katie's report. Shortly after, Katie arrives with news that all the gems, including the last one they seek, are in the Imperial capital. Understanding the urgency of the situation, Shino prepares to head to the Old Castle District Church, where the final gem is located. Accompanied by Daku, Asako, and Shinobu, Shino sets out for the church. Meanwhile, Kate informs Genpachi and Kango of the latest developments, and they promptly make their way to the church as well. Satomi, Nine, Doet, and Hamaji also learn of Shino's whereabouts. Upon reaching the church, Shino and his companions descend to the basement, where they encounter Ao. Despite Shino's request for Ao to return the gem, Ao refuses, claiming it has chosen him. Their confrontation is interrupted by the appearance of Princess Tuza, whom Shino and Daku recognize as the same person as the carved doll. Princess Tuza activates her magic, resurrecting the skeletons in the basement and initiating a fierce battle between the group and the undead. As the chaos ensues, Finn orders the elders to erect a powerful barrier at the church's headquarters using the spirit's lives. Satomi learns of the battle at the church and prepares to leave, but he is stopped by Lilith, who informs him that his departure could disrupt the barrier's balance, rendering it useless. Meanwhile, the battle rages on at the old church, with the undead relentless in their onslaught. Daku utilizes his evil eye to eliminate as many foes as possible, but the tide of battle remains uncertain. As chaos erupts in the basement of the church, Genpachi and Kango arrive to join the fray. Suddenly, Hazuki appears out of the shadows, but Shinobu realizes that this Hazuki is different from the one he knows. This Hazuki has lost everything. Shinobu struggles to fight against this alter Hazuki. Meanwhile, Shino continues his battle, and just then, Dustu arrives, much to Tama's satisfaction. She activates a magic barrier, removing the gems from the boys' bodies and rendering their powers useless. Helpless, the boys watch as Tama plans to use the gems to summon Princess Fuse and absorb her powers. In the midst of the chaos, Shino, despite being injured, manages to crawl towards the altar where Tama it is. Impressed by his resilience, Tama offers him the same water given to Isuki, intending to use Shino as one of her vessels. As Shino's consciousness begins to fade, he recalls his promise to always protect Sosuke and Hamaji, realizing that now is his time to fulfill that promise. The gems activate a portal to summon Princess Fuse, but Satomi reminds Finn of the catastrophic consequences if they allow Tama to succeed. Sensing danger, Sosu rushes to the church in his dog form. Inside the church, Tama demands that Al hand over Shino, but Al refuses. Tama orders Hazuki to attack Sosuk, leading to a fierce battle. Just as Tama's barrier is about to be broken by Satomi, the boys regain their powers. However, Shino, affected by the loss of body fluid and Morami's influence, begins to go on a rampage, transforming into his giant, terrifying form. 
Despite their efforts, Jimpachi, Kango, and Shinobu struggle to contain Moremi's power. Sosuga rises and cries after Shino, who, under Moremi's control, cannot hear him. Determined, Sosuke continues to call out to his friend, refusing to give up hope. Satomi and Kame use their spirit animals to aid Sosuke, but Moremi easily overpowers them. Finally, Shino hears Sosuke's voice, but he remains ensnared by Moremi's influence, trapped in a battle for control of his own body. As Sosuke urges Shino to run and leave him behind, Sosuke adamantly refuses, emphasizing that he owes his return to life to Shino's determination and their promise to protect each other. Just as Murasame is about to consume Sosuke, Shino's cry reverberates, halting the attack and bringing Murasame under control. Shino returns to his normal state and Sosuke embraces him, while the rest of their companions gather around, relieved to see Shino safe. As everyone celebrates, Ao quietly departs from the scene. At the church's headquarters, Finn and Lilith express their relief that Murasame has calmed down, restoring order. Later, in a conversation with Satomi in his office, Shino seeks answers about the mysterious figures from his past, but Satomi remains evasive. Despite this, Shino is determined to fulfill his mission to retrieve the last gem from Ao, vowing to Sosuke he will succeed with the help of their friends. With this resolve, the story concludes.